What's up guys, it's Sergey from Crystal Freediving and today I want to talk with you about oxygen transportation uh, in our body and why this information is really important for freedivers. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, please consider the idea to subscribe to it. Here on a weekly basis I'm sharing some freediving information with you guys, like for example like now, or sometimes I'm sharing some freediving training tips and sometimes I do free diving products reviews. So if you are a free diver, consider the idea to subscribe to it because it's going to be a lot of useful information on this channel. And if you already done it, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, oxygen transportation system. As you know, we're breathing air, right? As a human being, we're breathing air. And inside this air, about 21% uh, is oxygen. So 21% of our air is oxygen. Or you can say in a different words that the partial pressure of the oxygen inside this air is about 160 millimeters mercury. Right? So when we inhale this air going through our mouth or nose, uh, then come into our larynx, then trachea, then divide it to our bronchi, bronchiolis, etc., etc and the end point of our respiration tree, so this is, uh, we call a respiration tree, is our alveoli. So alveoli is a tiny air compartment. We have a millions of these alveoli. It's about 500 to 600 millions of, alve of alveoli in a human body. And then this alveoli is surrounding by the pulmonary capillaries. So capillaries surrounding this alveoli. So, inside this alveoli, after we inhale this air, inside the alveoli, partial pressure is about 104 millimeters mercury. So, when we inhale, like first it is 160, and when we inhale inside our alveoli, it's about 104, um, the partial pressure is about 104 millimeters mercury. Inside these capillaries, the partial pressure of the oxygen is much smaller. It is 20 to 40 millimeters mercury. The wall of the alveoli and the wall of the capillaries is really, really small. And this is why the oxygen have a chance, not actually only oxygen, any gas have a chance to move through these walls. And we call this process diffusion. So diffusion is a process when the gas can move from the area with high concentration to the area with a low concentration. So as you can see here, Inside the alveoli, the partial pressure is 104 and here is 20 or 40. So obviously here we have a high concentration and in our capillaries low concentrations. So this is why oxygen, because today we're going to talk about oxygen only, oxygen diffuse into our blood. So oxygen diffuse into our blood, our blood becoming oxygenated. So before it was deoxygenated and now it becoming oxygenated and then uh, this blood going first to our heart and then it's going to be uh, moving to our tissues. So how exactly our blood delivers the oxygen to our tissues? Really small amount of oxygen going to be dissolved directly into the blood. In fact, it is about 1.5%. So as you can see, it's a really small amount, right? And the majority of the oxygen is going to be binding to a special protein, uh, hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is a special protein inside the red blood cells, which can be binding to the oxygen. So hemoglobin have an ability uh, to be connected with the four molecules of oxygen only, right? So each hemoglobin can be connected with the four oxygen. So this is why amount of oxygen connected to the hemoglobin in our body is limited. And this is what we call oxygen binding capacity. Only limited amount of oxygen can be, com uh, combined, can be binding to our hemoglobin. Please remember that, we're going to discuss it later at the end of the video when we're going to talk about uh, more specifically about freediving. So again, uh, majority of the oxygen, like vast majority of the oxygen is going to be connected with the hemoglobin and this is how oxygen traveling inside your body. So let's say after your after the blood left the lungs it's going to move to the heart and then from the heart it's going to move to the different tissues. And our tissues need oxygen to produce energy, to produce ATP aerobically. 
and since the majority of the energy produced aerobically we need a lot of oxygen. So normally in our tissue the partial pressure of the oxygen is about 20 to 40 and our reverse process is going to happen. As you can see the partial pressure of the oxygen inside your blood is going to be 75 to 100 millimeters mercury and the partial pressure of the oxygen in the cells about 20 to 40. So this is why diffusion is going to happen again and the gas is going to move from the blood, uh, from the hemoglobin, is going to be offloaded from the hemoglobin and move into the cells to produce ATP. Uh, it's not all oxygen going to be offloaded from the hemoglobin. Uh, actually, we have, uh, uh, have so-called oxygen extraction ratio. It is the amount of oxygen which is going to be extracted from the hemoglobin and delivered to the tissues. And it is not obviously 100%, it's about 25% only. So this is why when the blood normally moving and coming back to the alveoli and then you exhale, uh, exhale, then you are still exhaling a lot of oxygen. You're still going to exhale 16% uh, of the oxygen. So when you exhale, 16% of the air is gonna uh, still be oxygen. So you inhale 21, exhale 16. So again, normally because oxygen extraction ratio is about 25%. However, it can be significantly higher. Interesting fact, which again, uh, please keep attention on. We're gonna discuss it later. That amount of oxygen, which is uh, offloaded from the hemoglobin and then delivered to the uh, tissues, is going to depend on the amount of CO2 produced by this uh, tissue. We call this Bohr effect. The more CO2 your tissues is going to produce, the more oxygen can be offloaded from the hemoglobin. Again, this is a Bohr effect. We're not going to talk about uh, Bohr effect too much in this video, but just keep in mind. Okay, guys, this is the how oxygen transportation system looks like. After the blood delivers the oxygen to the tissues, then it's moving again to your heart, and the heart uh, pushing it again to your lungs and then the same process is going to happen again again and again this is a process this is a constantly ongoing process never step never stopping so now a couple of uh, details for the same oxygen transportation system but when we're holding our breath so when we're holding our breath what happens here so now let's say there's not going to be a process of the oxygen deliver again to your alveoli and this is why this process of diffusion is going to happen until the pressure of the alveoli is going to be the same as the pressure of the partial pressure of the oxygen inside these capillaries. So as soon as they're going to reach equilibrium, the diffusion is going to stop. Unless the equilibrium is reached, diffusion is still going to take place, right? So this is why when you start holding your breath, for a while it's still going to be a diffusion process in your lungs even without uh, actual respiration right so the next really important part here is the amount of oxygen binding to the hemoglobin like i said it is limited this is why it doesn't matter how you're breathing it doesn't matter uh, what kind of tricks you do if the amount of hemoglobin is going to be the same, then the amount of oxygen connected to this hemoglobin is going to be the same. However, there is a one variation. If you are a free diver, you know that there is a, uh, let's say, static breath hold world record is about 12 minutes, and then there is a world record uh, like 24 minutes. And the difference is that for this 24 minutes, the free diver was breathing pure oxygen. So when someone breathing pure oxygen for, for an extended period of time, maybe for 20, 30 minutes, then the amount of oxygen dissolved into the plasma is going to be higher, right? It's not only one reason why the breath hold is going to be much longer, but this is one of the reasons, right? So once again, amount of oxygen connected to hemoglobin is not going to be changed, but amount of oxygen connected to the, uh, dissolved into the plasma can be changed. And the last part about the Bohr effect, like I said, if your tissue produce more carbon dioxide, then it's going to be more offload of the oxygen from the hemoglobin uh, near these tissues. So this is why for free diving, we want to be as much relaxed as possible. Because let's say if you're holding your breath and then at the same time, for whatever reason, your shoulders is tense. 
If your shoulders is tense, if you're tensing up your muscles, then obviously you're gonna produce more CO2 in these muscles. And then if more CO2 is gonna be produced, then more easily oxygen is gonna be offloaded from the hemoglobin in this tissue specifically. And then obviously it's gonna be less oxygen to another tissues such as your brain. So this is why uh, in free diving we're always asking our students and the we're asking ourselves as well so be as much relaxed as possible because in this case more oxygen is going to be available for your brain and for your heart okay guys this is it this was my uh, small talk about oxygen transportation system in our body i hope it was some useful information for you so maybe nothing new maybe just like combination of different parts and if it was useful don't forget to put the like buttons for my video because i really really like it when you put the like buttons i also really appreciate your comments i really like your feedback i reading all of your comments it's not that much in the moment but uh, i really love to see your feedback to my videos so if you do comments i really really appreciate it. so once again thank you for watching my video i appreciate your time and see you next time